death, death, devil, devil, evil, evil songs. Indeed. Well, we've just uh, finished listening to To the Bottom of the Sea. And uh, as promised, it is now time for Song Meanings and Origins. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how these songs came to be. The Industrial Revolution and How It Ruined My Life. You're never going to believe this one. This song came to be in a shopping mall in New Jersey. True story. I was visiting my mother out in New Jersey and there's nothing to do there. So we always end up going to a, a shopping mall. And we went to the Willowbrook Shopping Mall in Wayne, New Jersey. And I realized I needed a pair of shoes. So I thought I'd go looking for a pair of shoes in the mall. And as I went from store to store, I realized that all of the stores had the same five pairs of shoes. Now, here's where it gets curious. If you're alternative, punk rock, goth, emo, steampunk, what have you, there was a pair of shoes for you too. There was one, maybe two. Uh, one of them was one style of boot that was made by a company called New Rock. And the other one, uh, when it was available, was a pair of combat boots made by Doc Martens. And it had kind of occurred to me at that moment that mass production and our present commercial culture had come to a point where no one was willing to take risks. No one was willing to do something unusual and something unique. So instead, they pretty much just got rid of all of the options that it might that might only appeal to an individual. And, and uh, all of the companies were basically making different versions of the same five shoes. And even for the alternative guy or gal, there was a choice. But there was only one or two. And I thought to myself, how sad. There was once a time where you could go to a mall or go to a store and you might find an unusual pair of boots that appeal to you if you're like me and you like things that are unusual. And there was something just incredibly sad about the fact that even the alternative person was thought about, but there was only one or two choices for them. And I realized that the Industrial Revolution had ruined my life because <laughs> I couldn't find a cool pair of shoes. Robber Baron is a song that I have been playing for years. It just never had lyrics. So uh, that riff... God, where's my guitar? You know what? Hold on a second. Right. So, Robber Baron is a song I've been playing for many, many years. I think I wrote this riff in an airport at some point, and it goes... But it had no lyrics. So, uh, I guess at some point, you know, to be honest with you, I think I was inspired by the fact that President Bush was our president. And I really felt, I was starting to feel like uh, the divide between poor people and rich people was getting wider and wider. And I started to really, really understand, ironically, back then, this was in 2008, that 1% uh, of the country pretty much owns everything. And that's how I was really feeling. And uh, one of my favorite records at the time was a record by a band called Firewater, called... Uh, the band's called Firewater, the album's called The Golden Hour, and it rails very literally and distinctly against the uh, Bush administration for that very reason. And I think that really inspired me to write a song about a robber baron. But, uh, you know, me being me, I set it in uh, 19th or 18th century Eastern Europe, which gives it the uh, that sort of gypsy flavor that, that it ended up having. Stakes and Torches, The Uprising of the Peasants, is the next natural progression uh, for a song called Robber Baron. The Robber Baron's obviously a very, very bad man, and he's oppressing all of these poor people, and they finally had enough, and they, um, they revolt against him. 
Stakes and Torches is directly inspired by Sergei Eisenstein's film October. Now, I'd like to point out, I ain't no communist! But I do love Sergei Eisenstein, and his film October, which is about the Russian Revolution, depicts the uh, peasants storming the Winter Palace of the Tsar. And there's a scene that directly inspires the lyrics of Stakes and Torches. Uh, a Russian sailor is in the bedchamber of the Tsar's daughter, and he's just looking around in awe at all of the beautiful things and, and realizing just how much the royal family had and how little the average Russian person had. And it angers him tremendously, and he blows the room to smithereens, and just feathers go everywhere, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful scene. And that's uh, where the lyrics from Stakes and Torches comes from. I also feel I need to point out that while I was making To the Bottom of the Sea, my, my lovely wife, Jamie, and I had not been together all that long, so she hadn't really been around while I was making a record. So I would come home from the studio, and Stakes and Torches in particular, uh, I would come home and, I would, and she'd say, uh, how was your day in the studio, honey? And I'd say, it was great. I got a lot done. She'd say, let me hear what you recorded. And I'd put in a CD, and it would be me singing all of the parts of all of the instruments. So Stakes and Torches went something like this. And so on and so forth. And she would sit there and look at me and go, That's nice. And never said another word about it. And when the record came out and she heard it, she was so relieved that there were instruments playing those parts because she thought the entire time that that's the record I was making. Me scatting all of these violin and cello parts. And uh, somewhere deep inside, she was horrified. She later told me she thought I had flip my lid because I was going to release a song that went It's a lovely lady standing by your man standing by her man